Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about some common OTC meds that should be in your first aid kit. All right, thanks for joining me today. A um, couple of things brought me to this video. First of all, I have the um, beginning of a uh, summer, uh, winter, I'm sorry, allergy, chest cold kind of thing going on. And having some meds at home, kind of handy. You know, I didn't have to run to the store, I didn't have to wait in the line, didn't have to do any of that. So um, if I sound a little bit out of it today, or my breathing's all screwed up, or my nose is messed up, that's why. Um, second of all, last week I rotated through my um, big first aid kit. It's basically a big first aid kit in a toolbox. And I took out some of the old stuff and replaced the new stuff. And I started kind of watching some videos while I was doing it to kind of get me in the mood. And yeah, I do that. <laughs> and uh, I was watching a lot of first aid videos from new preppers. And I noticed that they tend to go for the big stuff and maybe they forget the little stuff. And don't get me wrong, the big stuff like tourniquets and quick clot and tons of gauze and trauma gear and chest seals, all that is great. And definitely, if you can afford that stuff, get it. You know, if you know how to use that stuff, get it. But there are a lot of things that are gonna happen in any kind of grid down or disaster or SHTF that uh, this stuff would probably come in handy way before any of that. So I'm gonna go through it real quick and show you Right off the bat, got my Sudafed PE. This is the stuff you don't have to buy over buy behind the counter. Um, and this immediately cleared. I was just dying this morning, wheezing, coughing, sneezing. And this stuff cleared me right up. Good enough to do this video because I was like, I don't want to have to not do a video today. Anyway, that's my first thing. And that's something to think about. You know, um, when I woke up this morning, if I had to uh, defend my home, start loading gear in my vehicle, there was no way I was going to be able to do that. After a pill from that, I'm doing pretty good. I'm still a little, you know, eh today, but I'm doing pretty good. I could definitely survive and do what needs to get done. Next off, mole skin padding. If you have, one thing's for sure, okay? After an SHTF, a grid down, whatever, you're going to be doing a lot more walking than you're used to, and you're going to get blisters on your feet, you're going to get your toes bumped into whatever. If you have any kind of foot issues, you're going to need this stuff. Um, this stuff comes in handy. I've used it with uh, when I break in new boots or something, if I get a nasty little uh, thing on the back of my heel. This stuff is awesome, and I've seen it in very few people's uh, first aid kits, as well as other foot care stuff, too, like foot powder. And Very important to keep, take care of your feet, and make sure you have lots of socks as well. That's kind of off on another video, but take care of your feet in a grid-down situation. Next up, and this is a new one, actually, this wasn't something I rotated out, is a uh, thermometer. Now, most of the, what am I going to say, the uh, lead and mercury, mercury, not lead, thermometers are long gone. But the digital ones provide pretty good accuracy, they're very inexpensive, and they're basically disposable. Um, so what I do is every year I check mine, and I found mine was intermittent, it wasn't always turning on. So I figured, time to dump it and buy a new one, and I bought two of these. Um, they're like a buck seventy or something at Walmart. I forget what they were. They were rather inexpensive. And um, how many people have this in a first aid kit? If you get to a point where you are um, feeling a little feverish, a little clammy, a little cold, do you know if you have a fever or not? You know, you could just say, I think I have a fever. But do you know if it's severe? Do you have children where a high fever may be very serious? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so something like this comes in handy, and a lot of people don't think about it, and this is something you could buy today in a store, over the counter, without any kind of finagling or jumping through hoops or getting a doctor to prescribe it. So it's really handy for your first aid kit. Triple antibiotic ointment. Real lifesaver. Um, many years ago, I think Patriot Nurse did a video. Um, back when she was wearing her sunglasses in her videos, it was way back when she started. And uh, it was something along the lines of uh, most preppers will die after an event or something like that. And um, one of her points was a small scratch can get infected and kill you. Now I'm going to give you a little, uh, you know, I had a uh, really, really bad cut on my finger here. I don't know if you can see. Let me see if I can get that to focus. You can see a little crease there. It was a really bad cut. And I had to actually use Quick Clot and a little bit of uh, crazy glue to... Put everything back together again 
and I use this throughout uh, the healing. And I got to tell you, you know, that's what a month and a half later, you wouldn't even know I had a cut there. So something like this, real important. Seen it in very few first aid kits. Again, people go for either a store bought one that's going to have one little tiny plastic container of this, or one of those little you know rip top things, or uh, they don't have it at all. So this is really important. Hydrocortisone cream. If you've got a uh, tendency to itch, um, my skin, it's weird. I can, you've noticed I have cat scratches on my arms in my other videos. That's because I have a baby kitten now. And I'll tell you, man, that cat will just tap me gently. And it will turn into a big, red, huge scratch in a day. So this is really important. Um, if you get into any kind of poison ivy, poison oak, whatever, this can really help you out. And... Let's face it, the whole point of being prepared is making sure that you're comfortable after a situation. Benadryl, another stop itch cream. This stuff works very, very, very well. Um, definitely either that or the hydrocortisone, get it. Now, some of this stuff is specific to me. It's what I use. I am a big fan of Aleve. I, uh, many, many years ago, when this stuff first came on the market, and do not take too much of this because it will screw you, up, screw you up. Take it only as needed because it messes up your liver and it, you know you don't want to OD on it. But um, many years ago, my wife uh, gave some to me after, I don't know, I hurt myself somehow. I think my leg was messed up or something. And I'm not a big taker of medication. I, I just, I'm like, eh, it'll be fine in an hour. I'm not going to bother. And she gave it to me and I'll be darned if within 20 minutes the pain was gone. So this is a very good pain reliever. Again, don't abuse it. Don't take it every day. Works very well. Kind of expensive for these bigger bottles. But Walmart, I think I have them in here somewhere, has the Equate brand, the naproxen sodium, which is the exact same thing. And this stuff is way cheaper. So, definitely stuff to look into. Um, allergy relief. And allergy medication. These are two different types of pills. I believe, let's see. Diphenhydramine, diphenhydramine. So the same pills, different, uh, excuse me, different um, types of pills. One's a caplet, one's a pill. Excuse me again. Um, anyway, these are really handy for me especially. Um, I have, I, as a child, I had a lot of allergies. I was allergic to everything. And uh, one of the things, you know, I mean, I, somebody could have cleaned their horse, you know, or brushed their horse down, and they'll stand by me somewhere, and I start locking up in my chest. Um, it's not anywhere near as bad now. I couldn't be near cats or dogs. Now I have three cats. Dogs still get me a little bit. I suspect with exposure, I'd probably be okay because that's what happened with cats. It was just, I wanted a cat, mass exposure, <laughs> I'm fine. So um, this is really important. This stuff can also save your life. Um, if you feel really bad allergy coming on, you know, if you feel your throat locking up or something, something like this can be handy. It is not, you know, a, uh, what do they call those, those auto injectors. It's not one of those, but it definitely uh, can stave off a really, really, really bad allergy attack. I've read lots of stories of people who uh, didn't know they were allergic to shellfish, let's say. And they ate it, and about 20 minutes later, they start feeling unwell. And they just pop two or three of these. And boom, they're better. Um, maybe you still need to go to an emergency room, but you'll live. That's very important. Again, also, making things less sucky after SHTF. Definitely important. Excedrin migraine. My wife is a big believer in this because she occasionally will get really bad migraines. Um, most of the stuff she will take for that is prescription. Um, when it happens, she takes the pill, and I forget what they call it, but it's a, uh, it's a single pill wrapped up in a package. But um, for a minor one, you know, to st again, to stave off a bad migraine, this stuff works like a charm. And I've even used it, and it's a little bit stronger than your regular aspirin. It's got the acetaminophen, aspirin, and caffeine. And also, too, if you feel a bad migraine coming on, sometimes a cup of coffee can stop it, too. All right, anti-diarrhea medication. Way important. Um, also something to uh, soften your stool as well. But people have died from dehydration because of diarrhea. In a grid-down SHTF situation, you may not have a doctor being able to treat you, and you definitely won't have a local CVS to drive down the street and pick up medications. Make sure you stock up on this. Remember, you're eating storage food that's been in there, in your storeroom for how, no, how long, 
Maybe you're going to find that one can that went bad, eat it the first day. This stuff will save your life. Um, you don't want to have diarrhea and die of dehydration. Okay. This is basically, if you had Tylenol PM, and again, I buy these when they're on sale, so they don't always match. If you've had Tylenol PM, um, this is ibuprofen PM, pain reliever PM, same stuff, um, for minor sleeplessness, um, which is why I always advocate having a group um, if you're going to be at your bug out location, because you can't stay awake 24 seven, you know? You might be able to pull off two or three days, but you know, you're gonna start feeling it. So if you're the type of person that even when you're overtired, you can't get to sleep, and you've been standing on your feet all day and you're already achy and sore or whatever, man, I take one of these and I'm out. <laughs> so, you know, the dosage is two. Um, it's just another thing to make it a little easier for you and something that, you know, no one ever thinks about. Now, um, they're also just plain over-the-counter sleeping pills. And, you know, that might be handy. If you have a team, when your shift is over and you go to get your sleep, taking one of those might work. Now, there is a caveat with this. Um, when I worked early mornings um, at the uh, gun shop where we were selling ammo out at uh, Front Sight, um, I had to get up at 4.30 in the morning. If I took one of these at 8 o'clock, I was still a little bit sluggish at 4.30 in the morning, so I never did it again. Because I had to shower, shave, get ready, get my gear, get dressed, and then I had to drive 25 miles out there. It's about 25 miles from my house. Um, Definitely not something you're going to be wanting to take if you're not going to get a full, you know, long night's sleep. And maybe the first thing in the morning you don't have something super important to do. But handy. Rolaids, antacids, any kind of antacids, the uh, Prilosec, anything like that. Very handy. Again, you know, I've had family members that have really bad um, acid. And I don't have it out here, but I store Prilosec as well. Um, to the point where they were throwing up what looked like coffee, all right? You do not want that happening to you. That's, that's dried blood. You don't want that happening to you in an SHTF situation. Um, something like this can stave it off. The Prilosec can treat it. Motrin, another good one. Um, I don't know if I already showed you a Motrin. No, I didn't. Um, definitely a good pain reliever. And again, this is what works for me. You may be highly allergic to this stuff, but you can take leave. You know, so this is what works for me, but it's to give you guys some ideas. Good old plain aspirin. Can't beat it, you know. Um, it can do everything from possibly help somebody having a heart attack to just relieving some pain. And again, I have seen very few people with just a big bottle of aspirin in their first aid kit. This one's getting rotated out. Um, I don't know when it expired. Yeah, <laughs> 3 8 2010. But, I mean, it's been, it's, it's been sealed in the, you know, climate-controlled room in my storeroom. It's not going bad anytime soon. But I figured, you know what, if I'm going to face a disaster, I want to have the freshest, newest stuff with me. We'll probably use all of this stuff up in the house in our closet. This stuff here, this is from Walgreens. It's toothache, it's toothache stuff. Um, everybody makes, everybody has this stuff. I don't know if you can see it. Um, gosh, what do I want to call this again? Its proper name is Eugenol. It's clove oil. It stinks. It will um, taste disgusting when you put it in your mouth. But if you have a throbbing toothache that just won't quit, this will kill it instantly. It's really, really good stuff. And when I growing up, my dad was a dentist. And the smell of this stuff reminds me of his dental office. It's like I open it up and I'm like, ah, I'm seven years old back at dad's office. But it works very, very well. Make sure you ask for clove oil or eugenol. It's the same thing. Works very good. Witch hazel. Good cleanser for the skin. Good way to, you know, clean off some uh, injury. You know, if you cut your hand, just pour it on there. It's cheap. Definitely uh, affordable. Can help. Uh, it's an astringent. It can clean and it can also take down swelling. Um, if you've got a bad cut that's starting to get infected, you can pour some of that on there and it will relieve it. Um, everybody's favorite, hand sanitizer. This is actually a new one I got from the dollar store. Um, not only is it a great uh, thing to keep yourself clean, but it's an awesome fire starter too. Remember, there's alcohol in it. And the last thing. All right. Um, Walmart sells this stuff, so I'm going to use them as an example. Two packs of this are, I think it's $4.88. It's in their camping and survival section, you know. Um, this stuff works. 
It is not quick clot, although I'm sure it has some of the uh, ingredients in it. If any of you guys know, feel free to answer in the comments. But this stuff works. Um, again, this was this bad cut. And I got this using the spine of a knife to uh, shred off some stuff. And it slipped and it went right underneath. So it was my own fault for being stupid. But this was bleeding bad. Okay, It was Amora that did that. You can see that little crease. That was a mora. Those things are sharp. It wasn't down to the bone or I would have gone to the ER, but it was a deep cut. This immediately stopped the bleeding. Did burn a little bit, but not bad. Um, definitely something, you know, if you can't afford the quick clot sponges and stuff, because some of that stuff can be expensive. Something like this, um, you just pour it out there and uh, works very, very well. It says it's non-stinging. It did sting a little bit. I don't know if that was just because I had such a deep cut. But it probably saved me a couple hundred bucks from getting stitches and everything else. And that's another thing, too. Um, you can take care of small emergencies in a disaster and not become part of the problem. You know, I mentioned I do a lot of uh, Aries stuff with ham radio and emergency services. And, um, you know, I always have some trauma and basic first aid kit in my car for just that reason. You know, if I hurt myself, if I get a nasty cut, the last thing I want to do is call into net control and say, uh, I'm going to come in, my finger is bleeding. I can treat it in five minutes and be back to taking care of what i got to take care of. So, just some basic stuff. Real simple items. It's over-the-counter stuff. You know, it's not ordering antibiotics from foreign countries or fish meds or anything, which, all you know, don't get me wrong, that stuff has its value. But, uh... It's just basic stuff to think about, and like I said before, not all of this is going to work for everybody. Um, this is just more to give ideas and to remind you that OTC stuff has its place in preparation. Not everything needs to be a tourniquet and quick clot and, you know, chest, uh, chest seal and gauze. <laughs> so anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.